Great review. What's going on, smart people? I could probably take this off now. I got a new monitor that doesn't have an external mic, so if I want to sync up the video that I'm screen recording and this video, it's easiest to do that by lining up audio channels. <coughs> but anyways, it has been a while. I have not made a video. I don't remember the last one that I posted. I took a bit of a break, a little bit of a breather from making these videos because I wanted to focus on this last semester because it's a particularly important one. This was my final semester of classes in grad school with kind of an asterisk next to that, and I'll get to that in a little bit. So I thought we'd do what we always do. We'd end with one final grade review. We'd go over the grades that I got this semester, talk a bit about the classes, how they were, and then the final cumulative GPA, I guess, of grad school. Now why I said that there's an asterisk next to all this is because I am done with all of my core classes. You know, the, the E&M, computational, math methods, classical mechanics, quantum, whatever, everything else. Uh, that's all done. That's out of the way. I just have one class left, which is my upper division class. We have to take a couple of those, which is quantum field theory part one. Now, you may recall that I've already taken quantum field theory part two, and I just have no idea when quantum field theory part one is going to be offered next. So, you know, for all practical purposes, this is my last semester. I guess at the end for the GPA, you can just have a little plus or minus at the end of that for whenever I take this final class. Uh, but this semester, I took two classes and three research credits. So the classes that I took were computational physics and electromagnetic theory part two. Uh, with everything being online this semester because of, because of COVID, uh, I already knew what my grades were. So this is going to be the first time where it's not really a surprise to me. I know what I got, but still, let's go ahead and go on right into it. So we have spring 2020. And the grades are Electromagnetic Theory Part 2, I got an A-, minus, and Advanced Computational Physics. I don't, okay, it, there wasn't a regular Computational Physics, I guess they just wanted to call it Advanced, uh, A- minus as well. And then for Research, PR, which stands for uh, Practically, Practically Reasonable. I did Practically Reasonable on this. No, I think that just means I did progress towards my thesis. You don't get an actual letter grade for that. Uh, last semester, I had a cumulative GPA of I think a 3.81 and this semester now I have a cumulative of 3.79 so the A minus has brought it down it is what it is I'm still proud of how I did this semester um, for a little bit of context <laughs> for like E&M last semester I literally I got a 100% on the midterm and I know I did really well on the final as well this semester E&M part 2 is a different beast I thought it was significantly more difficult I got an 82 on the midterm and an 88 on the final and uh incredibly the class average now that everything was take home on the midterm and final was like a 93 so i thought that that was interesting but so those are the last semester or those are the last classes that i had to take overall i thought the classes were really cool i got a huge amount out of my computational physics class when I took computational in undergrad, we went over a lot of the same stuff, like the numerical integrators using like uh, Simpsons, trapezoid, or going down the Monte Carlo rabbit hole. But it was still, that stuff was just a really good refresher. But there were also s material in this semester for computational that was new to me. For example, when I did computational, we didn't do linear algebra stuff, like diagonalizing matrices or finding eigenvalue eigenvectors numerically. So, that's a new tool that I have that I, I didn't have prior to this semester. Now, granted, if I ever had to solve that problem in reality, I would just use a NumPy package, I'm sure. But uh, but still, it was, it was nice to learn learn the theory. And um, so, for electromagnetic theory, what I think made it so much more difficult than last semester. I think last semester I got an A. Let's let's check that out. So I guess that's fall 20, 2019. Yeah. Okay, so last semester was an A, this one was an A-. minus. Future Andrew here. I realized if this is the last video that I'm making on this, it would probably make sense to show you every grade that I've gotten in grad school. So I'm going to post that here. There you go. I hope that, I hope that curiosity has been satisfied. Okay, um, what made this one so much more challenging to me was last semester was a semester on Green's functions. Just different ways of finding Green's functions. And I've already taken math methods before I took E&M. And we had a whole entire section on Green's functions. I've made videos on it because I wanted to understand them better. So going into E&M Part One, which is really you know statics, uh, I, I felt pretty prepared for that. E&M Part Two was just different. You got stuff moving. 
okay? <laughs> um, the easiest part of ENM part two was the relativity section. Again, probably because I make videos on tensors and stuff. I think like the scattering and diffraction wasn't particularly hard, but when we go back to like uh, Kramer's Kronig relations where you have permittivity as a function of the frequency, I thought that stuff was a little bit challenging as well as when you have like, you know, scattering electromagnetic waves, or sorry, not scattering, but if you have uh, an incident electromagnetic wave on an interface, that stuff, I mean, you can have a very simple problem on those, you could like, derive Snell's law, sure, that's easy, but that's not exactly what's in Jackson at all. I thought that that was the hardest section. Some people might disagree and think that that was the easiest, but for some reason, those problems were hard. It was just so many boundary conditions because you had uh, the incident, the refracted, and then the reflected electromagnetic waves and then the different wave vectors and stuff. I just thought that that was pretty challenging, but it's done. Uh, on top of all of that, so I was doing research, that's my research credit, I got a lot done, which feels fantastic. Honestly, I think that's partly why I, I guess I slacked off a little bit in these classes. I could have gone for the A and really went for it, and I think I could have done it but I got more research out of it that wasn't imposed by my advisor. It was just because I wanted to focus more on it. I had to, I'm actually taking credits to do research and I wanted to prioritize that. In my mind, I was not in grad school to be a professional class taker. I want to learn how to be a researcher. So I think I compromised a little bit there, which I'm okay with actually. Uh, I mean, overall, I mean, I'm still, I'm still solid with the GPA. I think any scholarships, academic scholarships that I might apply for, I'd still be eligible for. I don't think 3.8 is the cutoff, you know what I mean? And I got an academic scholarship already for this semester, so that was pretty pretty nice. I don't know if I've talked about that yet. In the near future, so let's, let's turn this over and talk about what's next. So I'm all done with my core classes. As I've mentioned, I'm done with classical, both E&Ms, both quantums, stat mech, uh, everything else in between that I'm forgetting. And what that means, if you remember <laughs> somewhat recently, I finished my qualifying exam and I got the PhD pass this time. Now, what that means is I'm now qualified. <laughs> I was qualified to take the comprehensive exam, which you're allowed to take once you've finished all of your graduate level core classes. So that's what's next. That's the last big exam that I have in my life, which is, or at least in grad school which is the comprehensive exam. So if the qualifying was, if it was an attempt to make sure everyone came in with this uh, uniform knowledge of undergraduate material, this is kind of the same, but for the graduate level courses that we've taken, it's making sure we know X amount in all of the different subjects all at once. Preparing for the qualifying exam, I don't think I'll ever know more physics all around, probably than in taking this exam. It's gonna be pretty brutal. Uh, the qualifying exam was one day, eight hour exam, uh, and eight questions, I believe. This one, I don't know how many questions it is, but it's split over multiple days, which is at least nice. Uh, and I think there's also an oral part to it. So there's the written part where you're actually solving problems, and then the professors can actually ask you questions and make you go to a chalkboard, talk about, I don't know, scattering, why is the sky blue, and then on the other side of things, talk about your own research plans and things, because that's what it's doing. It's making sure you know physics and you have a direction with your research. That's, I think, the goal of the comprehensive. Now, normally that would be this next fall coming up at the very beginning, so I think towards the end of August, early September. Who knows how this might be changed because of COVID and things, so that's one thing that might make this different. The other thing is, I think I'm the only one eligible to take the exam this time around. Normally there's a few people, like several grad students that take it all at once. For some reason, I, I doubt they're gonna write an entire comprehensive exam just for me. So I have this lurking feeling that they're gonna make me wait another year for other people to be able to take the exam and finish their classes as well. Uh, which on one hand would suck quite a bit because that means I'm going to have to retain all of this information from different areas of physics for another year. And it's not, don't get me wrong, everyone should be able to at any time of the night tell you what Gauss's law is or how to do certain, you know, I don't know, maybe even multipole expansions. But the stuff, this is graduate level uh, material that we're going to be asked on. So that's going to be questions straight from Jackson 
that I'm just going to have to be ready and willing to solve for another year, which I'm not looking forward to, but who knows, maybe that'll make some of it work their way into long-term memory. Sorry if that was a bit of a tangent. I know this was supposed to be about these grades, but since I haven't made a video in a while, I wanted to talk about, you know, what's what's been going on, what's coming up. And that's what's next. So next semester, I, naturally, I'm not taking any classes. I'm just going to be doing research. I'll also probably dabble in some TAing as well. I think I'm going to be doing that. And as for the summer that's coming up, I am full-time research assistant, which is awesome. I cannot wait. I've already started doing that. I've been brushing up on renormalization because I have to use it, regularization and renormalization so much in my research, and I still don't have a firm grasp of what I'm doing, if that makes any sense. Or I know what I'm I know I don't know what I'm doing, but I know how to do it, and I want to get a better understanding of what I'm doing. And as I'm going through this this summer and and becoming more competent with the quantum field theory and the different calculations, I'm sure I'll be talking about that a lot more. So that's something to look forward to. Uh, I there's no reason to make this a particularly long video. I just wanted to. Sh this has kind of become a bit of a tradition at this point of sharing these grades and talking about the classes at the end. But that'll do it. There's no reason to drag this out any longer. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comment section if you did. How's your semester going? Is yours still going on? Uh, how are online classes going? If yours is over, how'd you end up doing? Let me know in the comment section, and I'll see you guys there. And a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters, Adrian, Brandon, Carlos, Emily, Eric, Gary, Hannah, John, 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 Josh, Keith, Marceline, Michael, Oliver, Robert, Robert, Timu, and Tom. Thank you. It means a lot.